Hello, everybody, and welcome to Encounters USA. I have the legendary Bob Gimlin sitting next to me, and I, I, I guess I have to say this just because there might be one or two people out there that don't know who Bob is, but Bob was with Roger Patterson at the very first Bigfoot sighting. So, Bob Gimlin, welcome to Encounters USA. It's an honor to have you. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here with you. But... Well, it is, um, it's a fantastic thing. And before we start, I just want to tell you a little story. I talked to uh, Dr. Meldrum yes, yesterday, yeah. and I told him this story. When I was in college at Wazoo, which is Washington State University, my neighbor was Grover Prince. Oh, my God. Yeah. My old buddy, Grover. Yeah, and so at the time, uh, we, you know, he was the Bigfoot professor. Yes, And sir. I also had Dr. Bob Crane, who was one of my biology teachers. Oh, okay. Um, and he just, I just hate, he didn't hate Grover personally, but he hated what he was doing. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I, I got that end of it, but being Grover's neighbor, uh, he would take uh, me and my roommates and show us his Bigfoot collection, collection. And, and his cast and all that, which looks a lot like Meldrum's, looks yeah. a lot like Meldrum's uh, table now. Yes. But uh, at the time... It was like, okay, he's a Bigfoot hunter. And it was really nothing. I mean, there was a lot more important things. But now, look at what's happened. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're coming to this convention, and there are at least a few hundred people here. And some of these things attract thousands. And there is nobody besides Roger. There's nobody more responsible than you. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, yes, it does attract thousands. We were at a... Uh, conference down in California last year, and in four days there was 95,000 people came through the door. Oh my gosh, so, well, okay, so where are, you're like the godfather, you're like the whole godfather of the Bigfoot movement, and I have to ask you, when you are... I mean, you were, when this first happened to you, you're a young kid, yes, right? Course, yeah. And you're naive and gullible out the world. And um, there was the only evidence that Roger had that uh, there was a Bigfoot in the area that you wanted to research was the guy that was building the roads, right? Yes, yes. And that was that was sketchy evidence. I mean, to begin with, yes. correct? Yeah. Jerry Crew was the man's name. Yeah. And, and so Roger comes to you and says, oh, I, I want to go big for him. Yes. And so, that, and I, I know the whole story, and then you went to your boss, and, he, and you almost lost your job because you went with Roger, right? Well, I was a little longer down there then. I, I, I said just a couple, two or three or four days uh, down there, and then uh, it took a while to get down there. And then we get the, the, the evidence that was presented there at that time was footprints around a piece of equipment. And I thought we'd take plaster casts of the footprints and everything would be all right. Well, when we got down there, there were so many human tracks around there, and it had rained, so the footprints weren't really good, that good. So we just decided to stay and ride it uh, through the hills and, uh, and uh, do as much good research as we could. That's what, that's what the whole program was, to start with. And you know, we were down there for a month, riding in a different areas all around through the mountains. And, and so uh, and that's, that's how it all kind of came about. And in fact, the day that we got the, we got the film footage, we were riding out, we were going to go about 35, 40 miles further back around than we'd already covered. And I was, I had a little pack horse, we had all of our equipment, all the pack horse, and we were heading back in, and about four and a half miles from the camp, we went around the, uh, the big down hall tree in the creek, and one was standing across the creek, and so then that's when everything started happening so dramatically fast, and that's how the film footage got. Now, Bob, you're such an easygoing person, and I can just see you. I mean, first of all, I just really envy you. I've never, I love camping and being in the outdoors, but I've never been on horseback, and this is something that you have been doing regularly and and, and really living a good life. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, horses was my main uh, subject. You know, in fact, I started with horses when I was five years old and uh, doing different things. And, 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 well, when I was five, I used to go to the fields where my dad would be working the horses. And uh, he put me up on the horse and let me ride in for lunch. And so 
I started out at 49 years old with horses, and uh, they just became a part of my life. And so uh, I understood the horses. People have called me the man that whispers to horses. Well, I don't even like that at all, because I don't whisper to horses. I speak to horses. And uh, uh, so the horse whispering thing kind of got out of control, and I, I didn't try to fight it. I just let it go. And so, uh, I never did like that phrase uh, that some people put on to me that Bob's a horse whisperer. I was never a horse whisperer. I spoke to horses just like I'm speaking to you. And, uh, and they, uh, whether they understood it, they understood my English, body English, and, and how I was presenting things to them. So that's, that's how I all right. Now, is this before you saw Bigfoot, or is this after? No, it was before. Yeah. Hey, I did horses Isn't that weird? for years and years before uh, I ever saw Bigfoot. Um, that, I was, I turned 36 years old uh, two days after we got the found footage down there in Northern California. Okay. Well, there's a, there's a couple of things. So, going back to your your very uh, congenial personality. Are you going along and Roger saying, okay, well, we just got to go for maybe one more day? And, and what do you say? Well, uh, yeah, I kind of, we agreed on that because we had, we covered a lot of miles of riding every day. And we decided that we didn't find any fresh tracks. Well, basically tracks were what we were looking for. And uh, so we decided to ride back about 35 miles further back in around where we'd already gone. And so we had the pack horse with us. That's why we had the pack horse we were over here. And so uh, when, when we came up around this bend in the creek where this downfall tree system was, uh, no one was standing across the creek on the other side. And that would be uh, the west side of the creek. We were on the east side of the creek, and the west side of the creek. And that's when everything was kind of uh, happened. And, uh, and uh, so everything happened so dramatically fast that you didn't really have time to get scared or get whatever and it wasn't it, it, it wasn't sure of what you know it, it's kind of a it's kind of hard to explain how you feel because yeah they really do exist subjects there and basically uh, the people uh, Roger played testimonials and then he's little set tape thing about different people that had sightings and different events and uh, different reasons why they believed in it and so uh, I was uh, I was not a total believer really uh, I was out there doing something because I loved the outdoors I loved the woods I loved everything about it I did, I did a lot of my horse training outside of Washington. All right, so you guys are out and you see the, you, you see the, um, you see Patty, I guess the, that's what we've dubbed her now. So yes, yeah. are you thinking at this point, all right, we are, we are going to be rich. Uh, we, we've solved this. We've solved this mystery. Is that, is that what's on your mind and as you're getting back to civilization? No, none of that was on my mind. I never even thought about getting rich. Because we didn't really know until we got back up there and saw the film footage. The film footage didn't show me much of anything. Because I saw more than the film footage. And so I just said, well, and so Al Diatli and uh, Rene Uhenlin and the people that viewed it, including Roger, when I said, that's nothing. They kind of... Uh, kind of put me out of the uh, rim of whatever, see, because they all thought they had so much great stuff there. And I said, that's nothing, you know, that's nothing. Yeah. And they they run away quick. Roger and Al, the athlete, uh, they wanted to get out and, and promote it and sell it. And I said, well, why do you want to do that? You don't have nothing. If you do think you got something, stay right here in Yakima and promote it right here at home. But they wanted to travel and do all of that stuff, so I went along with it for a certain amount of time. And when I got fed up with it, I just went on back to work and went home, went home and went back to work. So, just explain to me now, I have to explain, I'll tell you, I, was, I left uh, the U.S. in 2001. 
I was a teacher over in Oman, Saudi Arabia. And when I left, their Bigfoot was, was like an afterthought. It was like, you know, UFOs. And I come back in 2013, and all of this is going on. So, do you think, um, have we come any closer um, to, to, to solving this mystery? Well, the mystery uh, will probably uh, take many more years to solve it all together. But, yes, we've come so far in 55 years that it has to pause me how much interest has developed over this film footage. And, and these conferences like Johnny puts on here are, are the great uh, motivating part of it to, to get, to get uh, you know, the people that are here have got an interest of some water or they've had an experience of something. And so they come here to listen to the speakers, to you know, see what experiences they had, and so forth. That really makes me happy because, uh, uh, you know, any interest in it is, is, is better than none. And so, uh, like for 55 years, uh, these conferences, like Johnny puts on, really motivates people to uh, get more interested in it. And, uh, exchange their ideas or exchange their experiences with other folks and so uh, that to me is a great thing and, and guys like John and here that put out all the effort to do that I respect them very very highly yeah thank you Johnny for even putting on this conference because otherwise I wouldn't even have like, met you Bob because well, you're a hard guy to track down well yeah. and we're going to Indian wrestle in a few minutes so yeah we're ready for that don't turn off yet no, no, no. So, okay, so I, w I want to ask you a little bit about these uh, debunkers. Um, I was listening to, uh, somebody was talking about, during a presentation, that there was a Hollywood guy that said, I'm going to debunk this Bigfoot. He built a suit, right? And then he's, and said, but, but in his suit, um, it was obvious that it was a suit, and there was nowhere close to what Patty looked like. But they are still using this, this this research that this guy did. They're still using it like he actually debunked Bigfoot, right? And well, they're citing that. He started out to do that, and when he got through, he said, there is no way in God's earth here that anybody could have faked that, yeah. uh, that they could have debunked it at all. And he said, I've studied it for four years, the, the muscle movement, the, the inches of the difference of the muscles have moved. Moved, and he said, "There's no way anybody." Can do it. And he said, "Besides that, in 1967, they never had the material out there that could even come close to what uh, I'll call her Patty, because she got that name uh, later on. Uh, and I first thought it was because of Roger Patterson's a widow. Uh, her name was Patricia, and so. But then I come to find out that the Russian people put the name Patty on it." And I wish I could still remember, I wish I could remember why they did that. But anyway, that was put on by the Russian scientists. And uh, so, uh, so be it with that. Well, that's an interesting, I did, I did not know that. I thought it was from Rogers and myself, but there was the account of the Bigfoot that they had captured and domesticated yes. in Russia. Maybe she was named. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so there was a lot more to it. When the Russian people intervened into this, they had, uh, from what I learned from the Russian scientists, I've had a lot of uh, communication and, 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 I mean, and events with the Russian scientists. And they tell me that about the time of Christ, there were big colonies of Bigfoot up in the Siberian area. And then it was killed off eventually because uh, he said, well, uh, one of them was sleeping out in the brush there and was trying to steal the young maidens out of the village. And ten of the strongest Russian men was going to get this uh, Bigfoot and, 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 and do something with him, masculating or whatever. And it, it, they said that when they, they attacked him, he threw them around like they were babies. So, you know, I mean, that's all hearsay, of course. You know, but it could be true, maybe. Well, but they did, I think they extracted the, the skeleton of that, the one that they had domesticated. And the only thing that I, that I really got out of that was that these guys were having sex with this big you, you, You've heard that, right? Yes, yeah. She had children. 
if there's anything that is going to convince you to stay away from vodka, I, I think that's it. If you're having sex with your foots, you need to let out that vodka. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, I'm not too fond of vodka. So, uh, yes. And, and the, the offspring uh, was a, a, a young man and he grew up uh, extremely strong and uh, I think he... I don't know the whole story behind that, so I don't really want to get into that, but I've seen pictures of the guy, and uh, he, he was a big guy, tall, slim built, and uh, very, very powerful, and so he was supposed to be the offspring. All right, well, Bob, I don't want to, uh, you are very busy, he's got a table in here, and he's got more people than me that wants that want a piece of it. <laughs> so I told him that, you know, that he's part of this interview is an Indian leg wrestling contest, but it, he keeps uh, complaining, oh, I've got a bad knee or, <laughs> or something like that. So I think this time I'm going to let you off the hook. Thank but you. The next time I, we're going to get or like a real podcast sometime. So maybe uh, maybe in the future we can, we can finish up. So I just want to thank you for the, the courage that you've shown. Um, none of this would even probably be happening if it were not for you, because you are the, you are a, you're a face. Well, thank you. the face of Bigfoot. Well, thank you, sir. Well, I don't uh, think Bigfoot's going to like that. But I'm, I'm smart enough not to Indian wrestle a young, uh, powerful guy like this. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. a guy in my 20s. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. So, all right, well, Bob, you got a lot of girls, a lot of women. Are, are you married? i got to ask you that. Yes, I'm married and got a beautiful wife, and she's real, uh, real... Je- Real liberal about me coming to these here and hugging all the women and, well, and shaking hands with all the handsome guys. You see. Yeah, one, uh, <laughs> these guys, Mrs. Gimlin, you give me a call. I've got some stories to tell you about your husband. But he is—he is a babe magnet. I can't. You walk around here and we just flock to him. And so I, I like to hang around him just so I can get maybe some of his leftovers. Well, no, I'm also married, so I'm, I'm getting myself in trouble. I'm yeah, kidding, honey. Yes, yes. But see. They feel sorry for an old man like me, and they know that I'm harmless. So they just hug up to me and, and, and love on me, and they say, hey, we're safe, but there's, there's no problem there. Hell, he's 88 years old. What can you expect? You're 88? <laughs> Bob, you are a good... Uh, that's not... What you're saying is not true at all. You are a good-looking dude. I cannot believe you're 88. <laughs> well, thank you. If I was if I was 20 years older and a woman, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> well... Thank God. <laughs> thank God is right. Yes. Well, all right, Bob Gimlin, thank you for uh, uh, joining us and, and telling a little bit about your story and your life. It's such an honor uh, to have you on Encounters USA, and uh, we wish you long years, and we wish you happiness, and we uh, want to see you again soon. Well, I, I hope to come back here uh, where Johnny puts on this company. You know, Johnny's such a great guy that I enjoy coming here each year. I've come here for a few years now, and, and I really enjoy coming over here because of the crowd itself that is really neat. And, you know, they're all here for the same subject, and uh, they appreciate everything that's brought out to them, or brought forward to them. And so there are some great speakers here, just like Scott Taylor is up there talking now, and Dr. Jeff Landry. It's a great, great speaker. Uh, and the list goes on and on and on, you know. And, and Tom Kentrell, uh, that's just a few names that I can think of. But uh, they're great guys. They're all great guys. Yeah, I came into the restaurant this morning to have breakfast with the she Watchers. Here's Bob, here's uh, Tom, uh, here's Jeff over on the table. It's like the, it's like the, who's who of the big book meetings. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir. I mean, that's an honor for you to say that. Yeah. Well, it's an honor to be sitting next to you, and you have no idea. But, yeah, I, I, you know, just to give you a boring background, I was seven, I think, the first time I saw on the search run, you know, the you guys' footage. So, yeah, we, I, you know, in a weird way, we, we go back together the wrong way. So. Yes, sir, we sure yeah. enough do. <laughs> All right, well, Bob, thanks a lot. Thank and you. enjoy your conference. Thank you. Uh, I will. Come and buy Bob's books, buy his stuff. He's got a lot of really good Yeah, we got quite a bit over there. Uh, there's actually a picture of me there when I was a little bit younger. And uh, don't let that picture deceive you because I really did look like that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> really good looking now. All right, Bob. Well, you take care. Thank you, Mike. See you later. Thank you.